Hello, good morning. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us this morning. I am Grace Benedict Rooney. I'm based in Auckland in New Zealand. I can see from the chat that we've got at least one other New Zealander joining us today. So that's lovely to see. Welcome. Someone from South Africa, a few Aussies. It's great to be back with our second webinar for 2024. And um, if you missed the first one, we did upload it to our YouTube channel. I am excited to share a number of different updates today, and we've got a great range of zeros here to chat to you. So I thought I'd do a quick round of introductions so you know who's who for today. So there's me, I'm the Developer Evangelism Manager. We also have Millie, who's also in New Zealand. She is the Partner Marketing Manager, and she's got some really cool updates around app listing optimizations and the growth program to share with you today. We've got Edward, one of our product managers in the product and tech organization in Zero, and he's going to be sharing a little bit about API thresholds. We've got Cam from ecosystem team as well. He's our senior app marketing manager. He is going to be talking to us about some of the updates we're making to Zero app store listings. And then we've got three wonderful people helping out of the Q&A today. That's Welly, Kim and Brian. They're all great members of our developer relations team. If you have ever raised a support ticket to API at zero.com, you're very likely to have spoken to Welly at some point. So it's great to have him here today too. Before I jump into the agenda, the thing I'll just say is if you do have some little uh, questions at all, I welcome you to submit them via the Q&A functionality. You should see that at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So please do pop that in. We'll have Wally, Kim and Brian helping out with those questions. Now, I did pop a little poll on here, which is what is your favorite season? I can see that summer has won by a mile, which is good. I'm sure there's plenty of New Zealanders like myself who are looking forward to summer. Thanks for indulging me with that. Let's hop into the agenda. What are we going to talk about today? I've got a range of different topics. We're going to be talking about some of the pre-submitted questions that came through and, and some of the stuff that we're hearing. We've got some updates around the accounting APIs, thresholds and upcoming changes. We've got a few different updates, like I mentioned, from both Cam and Millie around App Store and our growth program. And then I'm going to run through some new resources we have available for App Store subscriptions and also some new best practice guides. And we'll wrap it up with some Q&A at the end. First things first, we've had some great pre-submitted questions come through. Thank you for putting those in. I really appreciate the diligent thought that some of you put into what you're asking and means that I can come back and give you some really solid information. One of the questions I got a couple of times actually was, do we have code samples? We do. They're all in our GitHub, Zero API GitHub, which is there for you to access as a resource. And we have both sample apps and also SDKs on there for a range of different languages like .NET and PHP, Ruby, Python, and a, a couple more. So please do feel free to access those. We also got a pretty interesting question, which is how to code for time zones. Obviously, if you uh, have a specific endpoint that you're really struggling with, you're welcome to contact us we can give you some more specific advice. But I think like broadly speaking, all of the database times that we have are in UTC. So things like last modified and created date and that kind of thing, they're all in UTC. And you will see that in the API reference documentation if you look at that on the developer center. Generally speaking, we, we don't have a concept of the kind of like time of day. When you create data, it really it really just gets created at the point in time and, and all the dates that we have are pretty much UTC date. That's a general answer. If you have something really specific, please do contact us and we'll be happy to chat to you about that or our API support will be happy to chat to you about that. Again, a couple of questions about sandboxes and testing. If you haven't caught on, we do have a demo company, which is great because you can switch between all the different regions that we offer and that data does reset every 28 days. However, 
if you are a certified app, we can give you a free test org. So you can contact our support team with that email you see at the bottom of the slide there, and they can help you get that set up so that you are able to do your testing for the product that you have. And, and that means you'll have that enduring data that you need. The other thing was just where to kind of keep up to date with stuff. And I'll, I'll do a little reminder of this at the end of the webinar as well, but we do have these quarterly webinars, which we upload to YouTube. We have a newsletter that goes out every month as well. And we do have a developer blog, devblog.zero.com, where we are posting a load of different information. And all of those blogs tend to go into the monthly newsletter as well. So that's a good place to keep up to date. We did have a number of feature requests again. These are the three that were the most popular. I really hear you with XPM. XPM is a, a key product for Zero, which we're continuing to invest in. And I don't have any updates for you around changes coming to the API, but I do hear you and I, I am passing that feedback back to them so they know that it's a, a thing that we're getting asked about a lot. Same goes to webhooks, um, ongoing conversations with our product and engineering teams around um, your webhook requests, because I know how useful those things will be as well. And of course, your app store subscriptions, a few app partners asking about additional features coming through there. I don't have anything I can share with you at this current moment, but we are obviously working on building out some some additional features there. And I'll be going through some of the resources that we have available to support your work on that too. If you do have other feature requests, you are, of course, always welcome to pop them through to user voice, which we uh, do look at. And lastly, a couple little things around like standards and certification. So if you do want to get certified, you can apply via your app on developer.zero.com. All of the documentation for that is in the developer center. You can look at the app store section of the docs men menu. And we are going to talk about some best practices stuff later. So just a little sneak peek that that topic is coming right up. So without further ado, I am going to hand over to Edouard, who's going to be talking to us a little bit about the API, uh, counting API threshold changes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Grace. Uh, it's great to be here on the webinar today and be able to connect with our customers. So I'll just be talking a little bit about accounting API thresholds. So in September, the accounting API had high volume thresholds expanded. The high volume thresholds are now enforced on the journals, payments, invoices, bank transactions, manual journals, credit notes, contacts, and purchase order endpoints. And these thresholds only affect retrieving data. So if you're sending us HTTP GET requests those are to those endpoints, those are the ones affected. Uh, if your request is in breach of a high volume threshold, you'll be receiving a 400 bad request response. And there is additional details in the warning section of the response body for you to have a look on uh, specifically what's gone wrong. From our point of view, please monitor and be aware of 400 type responses from the accounting API and investigate from the client side. To make the most of integrating with the accounting API, make sure that the recommended patterns are being used, such as requesting a list of IDs through using the IDs uh, or using uh, the statuses for requesting multiple statuses. Uh, have a think about uh, how much data that you need and whether or not this can be served by a summary only uh, response uh, set it by setting the summary only query parameter and making sure that the fields used in the where clauses are considered optimized and combined with pagination. Thanks, Grace. Thank you so much, Edouard, for joining us. I was stoked that you could come along and chat face-to-face -face with some of our developer community. If you do have any questions for Edouard, I'd welcome you to pop them into the Q&A and we'll answer those later on in the webinar. So with API changes, we obviously want to keep update to them. So I'm really excited to share with you that we have launched a change log on our developer center very, very recently. So this is a place that you can keep up to date with all of the things that are happening on our APIs. This is currently coupled with a monthly newsletter that we send out with API changes as well, but all of the changes are available on our developer center directly. You can find that developer.zero.com slash changelog. And currently we're updating 
this change log towards the end of every calendar month. So you can see there, there's a little last updated in the middle from the 30th of September. So it's just been updated as of a couple of weeks ago. So please do have a look out for that. And it's available through the Developer Center via the Docs menu. In terms of upcoming or recent API changes, we have had a, a couple. I think the most notable one, which I'm just super, super, super excited about, is the increase in page size for paging from 100 to 1,000 for some of our endpoints. And um, I know that paging is something that's very useful as a developer. And so it's great that we've been able to expand that slightly so um, you can improve the functionality of your integration. That change is for a selection of our endpoints specifically for invoices, contacts, credit notes, bank transactions, manual journals, payments, purchase orders, prepayments, and not forgetting the over payments endpoint too. So there are um, a range of different endpoints that's available on, and I'd encourage you to make the use of that if you are accessing data from those places. We also have released a couple of um, other changes. One of those is adding a new field to the employee leaves endpoint for the payroll API for the UK. That is the schedule of accrual date field. And this is current an extension of an existing field, which is called the on anniversary date functionality, which enables an employee's leave to accrue based on a custom date. So I'd encourage you, if you are integrating with UK Payroll, to have a little look at that new field that's available. We also launched a new field for US sales tax on the credit notes endpoint. And that new functionality has been added to specify the US sales tax levels when creating auto tax credit notes. So that's quite helpful. And you will be able to see the following new fields, which are invoice addresses, taxability, tax breakdown, and sales tax code ID when you fetch an auto tax credit note. So would encourage you to look at that too. And you can find all of this information on our change log. So I am going to hand over to the wonderful Cam, who's going to take us through some of the updates we're making to App Store listings. Cam. Thanks, Grace. And hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Cam, uh, and I focus on helping Xero users find and connect apps like yours and make it easier for them to run their businesses. So today, uh, I'm excited to cover off three recent updates. And we've made these updates because we're constantly trying to improve the Xero App Store your app listings, and how we match the right users to the right apps. Our latest updates help collect that data that help enhance the visibility of, app, of your apps with the right customers, so help them drive more quality traffic and leads. So the first one, a free trial. We have added a new field that enables you to display on your listing if your app has a free trial and the duration of that. We know that free trials are a great way to get quality customers in the door and using your app. You know, a lot of customers find this as the best way to see if the product will meet their needs and it helps them see value really quickly. So if you offer a trial, you really want to display this on your listing. Number two, app audience. So no one knows your target audience better than you. This new field enables you to select the primary customer that your app is designed for. So we already allow you to tag industries that your app is best suited for. This new field enables you to target by business size and customer type. So is it designed for accountants and bookkeepers or our wide small business audience or perhaps both? And, and this information is, is really important as it helps us, again, better match your app with the right customers. And then the, the third uh, field that we've added, app features and customer tasks. So we're always looking at, at the ways uh, that we can best tag and communicate how your app helps businesses. This field enables you to select from a list of everyday tasks that your app enables a customer to complete. And the key thing here is that it, it does it in a consistent way, which gives clarity to customers. So you'll be able to select up to 10 app features that match your customers' primary tasks. 
the first five will show on your app listing and but the rest uh, will still be used for internal categorization and search engine optimization so yeah make sure you're taking advantage of these updates uh, these fields can all be updated by your app on developer.zero.com. A reminder how you do that, you log in, click on your Zero app, navigate to the App Store listing section, and that's where you'll find these. So those are our, our, our three uh, key Zero App Store updates, and keep an eye out for more announcements and optimizations in the future that show how we'll use this data to drive more and better quality leads to your app via the App Store. Back to you, Grace. Thank you so much, Cam. I think it's really great to have you come along today to give people a bit more visibility on some of the changes we've been making in the background. And if you do have a listing on our app store, I'd really, really encourage you to make sure you are keeping that up to date. In the same vein of that topic, I'm going to welcome Millie to join me now. And she's going to be running through some stuff around how you can optimize your listing and also a little bit of a update on our growth program as well. Thanks, Millie. Perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Millie from Platform Marketing, where we focus on building um, scalable programs to support your growth of zero. So one of the key initiatives led by Platform Marketing is focused on improving um, the quality of your app listing to increase conversion from page view to get this app click. I've already met with some of you to discuss ways we can optimize your listing, but I wanted to share some top tips based on what I've seen. So number one, complete your app listing details on the developer portal. As Cam just mentioned, we've introduced new fields to the portal that help internal categorization, SEO, and making sure your app reaches the right customers at the right time. I strongly recommend going through all the fields and ensuring they're all up to date. All too often, I see half the fields filled out, so the more information, the better. If you don't have access to the developer portal, you can email api at zero.com with your name and details to get access to the dev portal. Number two is enhance your written content. A common issue that I've noticed in, is the overview section and integration details section often lack sufficient details around what your app does and how it benefits your customers. Here's an example of one of our app partners deputy. As you can see here, They've been really thorough with the information that they've provided and the way they've formatted their text. You can use Markdown to format your text, breaking it up with numbers, bullets, bold headings to improve readability. Remember to be strategic about keywords. Customers often use search functionality to navigate their way through the App Store, so ensure your content is rich with relevant keywords. And add proof points such as trusted by 300,000 workplaces or saves X amount of admin hours. This is a really powerful way to show the value of your app. And number three, provide context to your screenshots. So remember customers viewing your app may not be familiar with your product. And while screenshots are really helpful, without any context, they can feel a little bit overwhelming. So I suggest adding a branded background to your screenshots and including key callouts that highlight the key benefits of each view. You can see that um, deputies done a really good job of this. They got better schedules using real-time business insights and then they have a few product screenshots to match. So if you're looking for more resources on this, you can jump onto the uh, Zero Developer Center, subscribe to the developer blog, or follow along uh, in the developer newsletter. And I'd also really recommend jumping onto the Deputy App Store listing on the Zero App Store. Great, so another initiative led by Platform Marketing is the Zero Developer Growth Program. And I know a lot of you are already familiar with it, but I wanted to take the uh, opportunity to provide a quick update on where we are and how you can stay informed about future cohorts. So what is the Developer Growth Program? It's a new initiative designed to help accelerate apps towards that premium tier by offering enhanced visibility and tailored support. Any app on the Zero App Store in the connected tier is uh, eligible to apply. And right now we're in the pilot phase, which has kicked off in August and will run for six months. So we have five apps in that uh, initial pilot, and it's very much a test and learn, um, which we'll aim to expand in early 2025. So how can you stay uh, updated or apply? So while the next cohort isn't open yet, there is a short form that you can fill out to express interest, but you likely won't hear back uh, from us until towards the end of the year or early next year when we review the official um, cohort applications. Uh, we'll keep you informed about any upcoming cohorts via the developer newsletter, or you can follow the Zero Developer blog for updates. 
Thanks, Grace. Back to you. Thank you, Millie, for joining us to this morning. I yeah, I'm super excited to see how our pilot goes with our growth program. It's very exciting. So looking forward to having you come back to more updates as that progresses. Uh, we're going to move on a little bit and talk about some of the resources that we've been working on here available for you. One of the notable things we've been doing is really working on ZAS resources for people to use. I'm just going to launch a quick poll there. It's a short answer. If you are using apps or subscriptions, I'd love to know if you have any requests for content that you'd like to see. The screenshot you can see on the slide here is of our playlist from our developer YouTube channel. And you can see Kim, who's also on the webinar today, helping out with Q&A, is the one doing a lot of the recording. And, and Brian's been working on this as well, doing a lot of the editing and that kind of thing. So I would encourage you to go and have a look at those if you are trying to work on building your apps or subscriptions or you have some questions about how some of that setup functionality works we've got a video in there that's um, supporting that um, we do have a goal over the next few months to keep releasing content here the current video we're working on is around how you can update your ZAS plans, so archiving and adding new ones and that kind of thing. So keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks. Of course, if you do have special requests, love for you to submit them as a question and answer to this question, the poll that I have up at the moment as well. Or, you know, you might just want to go and um, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss when the next video comes out. There's also a bunch of really interesting other resources on our YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar with the YouTube channel, um, you might want to do that. And there's a kind of a bunch of different things about Postman and subscriptions and of course the last recording of a previous webinar as well. The other resource that I wanted to talk about at the moment is the best practices that we've just launched. These are on our developer center and they cover a range of different topics. We've launched 18 of them across a, a bunch of different things. And I'll show you a, a couple of screenshots in a moment. They cover everything from rate limits to branding, taxes, and all sorts of stuff in between. So I would love to hear if you have any burning questions that you personally would love some best practices on from us in terms of building, it could be about certification, it could be about building generally on the platform. You're welcome to pop that in while I chat over a couple of the highlights that I'd like to share with you today. One of the things that we've done, we've launched an overview of all of the different pages. So this is essentially a guide to all the different features that we have available. Um, you can see there, there's things like um, App Launcher and App Store, um, and rate, there'll be rate limits and all those kind of things as well. So this is a really helpful guide, especially if you're working on certification, it will show as well where it's recommended or required. There's things like branding and naming in here. I know that it can be really tricky to get something like that right. So we've put all of those resources in the one spot so you know um, where to find our guidelines and um, what the requirements are for certification and all of the different resources you might need along that journey. We also have technical things like rate limits. This is one of the questions that actually came through uh, pre-submitted. So I was stoked that I was able to time, time our releases so well. Uh, you can have a read through this and have a look at what happens when you exceed a rate limit, how you can avoid rate limits and, and how you can um, kind of manage those going forward. So um, that's a really good spot to have a look at. We also have kind of more complex topics like taxes, which taxes can be really hard and hard to figure out. And so um, that's a great resource as well. We do have some videos on taxes in our developer YouTube as well. You will see like on this taxes page here, there is a section on all of the pages that are are required for certification, what the specific requirements are for certification. So hopefully that's really useful and I'd welcome some feedback on that um, if you have any. And I appreciate those of you who have put in a couple of requests for content for us to work on on that too. I will move on quickly to talking about 
our meetups. So we've actually run a couple of meetups so far this year. We've hosted one in Melbourne and more, more recently in London. And it was really, really wonderful to see so many zero developers and zero apps uh, from our ecosystem come along to those events. And it was nice to see some very familiar faces and also people I hadn't had the opportunity to meet in person yet. Thank you so much for coming along. I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a sneak preview that we are hoping to organize um, a couple of social events in November and December just for um, the kind of Christmas period, the holiday period. So if we do pull those together, then please keep an eye on our newsletter for the invites to come along to those. Um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in person. Before we jump into q and I just want to, um, again, push some of our channels, make sure you know where to keep updated. Of course, there's those, web, those meetups that I was talking about. We've got today's webinar. You're welcome to um, engage with us on some of our other platforms, developer.zero.com, obviously, and, and the user voice. If you do need to keep up to date with updates or you need help, we have our developer blog, devblog.zero.com. We've got monthly API um, newsletters. And of course, um, you can email api at zero.com where all of our support team are able to help you with your question. I am going to jump into the Q&A for today. I'm going to launch a quick little poll and just ask you which topic you have enjoyed the most and jump into the Q&A. So I'll invite Cam, Millie and Edouard to put their cameras on and we'll hop into some questions that have come through. If you do have any questions uh, that you would like answered, then please do submit them via the Q&A functionality. I'm going to jump in and ask Cam a question first, actually, that came through, which is, are we planning to make other changes to App Store listings and where can I find out about them? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the changes can share today uh, are, are part of you know, a kind of constant uh, roadmap of, of improvement uh, in terms of up, upcoming changes and um, keep an eye out in the um, developer newsletter. And so that's that's uh, probably the, the um, best place to stay um, stay ahead. You'll find things uh, in the developer portal and co constantly be, being up, updated there. Uh, and we will share in webinars as well. Thanks, Kim. Um, definitely want to have you come along uh, to our future webinars and give some updates. Edward, there were a couple that came through about your um, discussion around API thresholds. Um, one of those was, do you have a resource to help with the um, data? Because the, you know, what, like, how can I figure out what I can do with the API or to make sure I don't bump into the thresholds? Yeah, absolutely. On the developer docs, uh, we have launched a efficient data retrieval page. Uh, and so in that page, you'll also see the threshold limits outlined and also some tips and tricks uh, and recommendations. Cool. We'll um, try and get that popped into the chat as well um, so that you have that um, link to. Um, Someone else also asked like, if you could speak more about why we've introduced the thresholds. Yeah, absolutely. I can provide some more background context there. So we noticed that a small percentage of organizations, the integrations and specific usage patterns use zero systems in a way that is disruptive to other customers. Uh, and so thresholds is about us restricting their impact, but still allowing them to be supported, uh, trying to find a balance of making sure that zero systems are used uh, in a stable way, but still allowing our third party customers to uh, build integrations that support their customers. Cool. Thank you, Edouard. I appreciate that. Um, we had a submission from Joe that's just come in, um, which was um, a couple of um, feature requests. Well, let me read it through here. Are there plans to do the following? One, allow custom integrations, which is developer partner listings on the App Store to receive reviews. Um, you know, I don't have any knowledge of that at the moment, Joe, but um, that's a it's a really 
good question. I'm happy to go and ask that question for you. I'm not sure we'll have an answer um, straight away, but I, uh, it's a great question to ask. Um, I'd love to know, like, um, you know, like, was that something you would find a lot of value in is having that um, visibility from your customers about your integration? Is that something you find valuable? Um, and uh, your second question there was, um, can we bring back a way for zero customers to submit integration requests like on the old find a developer forum? Um, that's a, it's also a great question. I don't have a response for that at the moment, but um, I will definitely take that feedback back to our teams. Um, it's really helpful hearing things like that. So uh, thank you for putting those requests through. Um, let me have a little look here. Um, Millie, there was a question that came through about the tiers. You mentioned the premium tier um, and I and also the connector tier, I think, as well. And someone just just wondering if you could clarify that for them. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Grace. So we currently have a two-tiered app partner program consisting of connected and premium tiers. So everyone that enters um, the app's store is starts off in the connected tier and to get to premium you need to reach a minimum of 300 subscriptions through the app store um, and showing consistent growth you also need uh, four, an average of four star reviews with over 50 reviews on the app store listing and you must be connected to app launcher as well thank you millie um, there's also i i know um, emily asked this in the chat which was um, about um, how many app store apps we'll be looking at for the cohorts of the growth program. And we also have had that come through in the Q&A from Carlos as well. Um, so I was just wondering if you might be able to just um, revise, like repeat what your, your response was to Emily there, just to make sure we all um, understand. Yeah, cool. So um, we're ideally hoping to to roll out cohorts every quarter and they will be like smaller, maybe five to 10. Um, but as I sort of mentioned, we are in the pilot phase. So we're really testing and learning. But in a perfect world, it would be smaller, more frequent cohorts. So every quarter. Thank you, Millie. I appreciate that. Um, I'm just having a little look through um, Q&A. There's some um there's some quite specific ones in here which um, would be better off if you answered um, uh, caught, like emailed us via API at zero.com. Um, I can also see there are still, there are quite a few questions here coming through about the XPM API. Um, I am not, I won't profess to be an expert about all of the things on XPM at the moment myself. So I'm not going to tackle any of those um, live. However, I would encourage you to, um, uh, I would encourage you to raise those through to API at zero.com. Um, there's also a number of um, feature requests there. Uh, so you're welcome to uh, contact us about those too, um, or you can um, raise them on um uh, user voice as well. Um, we've got a really interesting question that's come through actually for you, Millie, from Ryan. Um, and uh, he has asked, does your app show differently when it becomes a premium app in the Zero App Store? Uh, no, it does not. Uh, like show differently? In, I think, in... there, is there anything that updates on your actual listing um, on the Zero App Store? No. No, there'll be no changes to actual listing. Uh, we do have a we do have badges, but we've got connected and premium badges, but they're more for you to show on your own uh, website rather than something that's showing on ours on the Zero App Store. Yeah, we um those badges are in um uh, we have some marketing guides actually on our developer center documentation, and we have also cross linked to those in our um, best practices that we have launched as well. So um, if you are a certified app in the connected tier, um, you can display that. Or if you're in premium, you can obviously display the premium one. So um, that's a really good call out actually, Millie, um, being able to use that um, to talk about. Um, let me have a little look here. Um, any last questions coming through? If you do have any more questions, recommend um, uh, putting them through. Um, um, from Tim, 
Um, great work this morning. Do premium apps get higher rate limits via the API? No, we we don't offer that as a um, as a benefit in our partner program at all. So um, so the rate limits that we have are the same, no matter um, what what you're doing, whether you're um, connected or premium or if you're uncertified. Um, so we don't offer that um, at all. If you are having issues integrating with our um, rate limits, uh, integrating and you're running into rate limit issues, um, we do have some um, specific advice in our uh, best practices, like I just mentioned, that talk about how to manage your rate limits. So I'd encourage you to have a look at those. Um, if you are still um, unsure about what you can do to manage that better, please do contact us and our API support team um, are absolute experts when it comes to stuff. So um, they can uh, they can um, help out with giving you some more specific advice as well. Um, great. I think, let me just have a look. Um, I think that is all of the questions that have come through. Um, Sorry, Grace, am I good to just jump in there? Um, yeah, sure. Go be, ahead. It'd be Edward, great but... if you Thanks. could either send me a private message on Zoom, but I'd love to hear more about your uh, use case or what it is that you're trying to do with our API um, that's got you concerned about the rate limits. Um, that'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah, I. If... Um, please go ahead and email api at zero.com and, and just um, say it's for Edwa and um, we'll make sure our API support team gets that back through. Um, I really appreciate getting some um, feedback um, about all of that stuff as well. Um, cool. I think that is all of the questions that we have today. So I just want to say thank you for coming along and joining us. Um, we would love to get some feedback from you. So I've just popped a little survey link in the chat for you to answer, and we'd love to hear from you um, via uh, that link. Um, I will, of course, make sure that this gets uploaded onto our um, YouTube channel as well, so you're able to watch back if you um, have anything you want to um, revise on afterwards. I really, really appreciate you all coming along to join us today. Thank you to our fantastic speakers, Edouard, Millie, and Cam, and of course, Welly, Brian, and Kim, who have been helping out with all of the Q&A. We look forward to seeing you um, in a few months' time at our next webinar. Um, have a great rest of your day. Talk soon. Thank <music> you.